Okay, in this video, I'm going to pick up where I left off and continue walking through the uh, solution to uh, some of these trig equations. And the next problem I want to look at is number 69. Now, this one seems pretty straightforward at first, and if you had a calculator, you might be able to find a, um, a fine way to, uh, to obtain a solution. But I'd like to walk through a, perhaps a, what we say is a more elegant solution. So uh, we've got tangent theta equals 2 times sine theta. And rather than graphing both sides of the equation and finding where they intersect, let's use some trig identities here. Well, tangent theta is the same as sine theta divided by cosine theta. That was one of our first identities that we memorized last week. And oftentimes, if the solution doesn't become clear at this point, we, uh, we will set the equation equal to zero. So I'm going to do that by subtracting 2 sine theta to the left-hand side of the equation. So I've got sine theta over cosine theta minus 2 sine theta equals zero. And again, a lot of these tricks or techniques that I'm using in these videos, uh, especially in this one, uh, they just come from practice. Um, you'll see some of these tricks and then try them on different problems, or you might have to just employ trial and error and uh, try a, a variety of different techniques until you find a method that arrives or that allows you to arrive at a final solution. Now from here, this is kind of interesting. I noticed that both terms, this first one and the second one, contain an uh, argument or a value of sine theta. I should call that a factor. That's a common factor. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to factor out sine theta from both of those terms. And that leaves me with 1 over cosine theta minus 2. And now I, I really think we're going in the right direction here because uh, essentially what I have are two factors, sine theta times, and I'm going to rewrite this as uh, secant theta equals zero. And now uh, whether sine theta or whether secant theta minus two is equal to zero, both of those will produce a, a solution or multiple solutions for this particular problem. So again, when we have factors that multiply to equal zero, either factor can be uh, equal to zero. So we'll find when does sine theta equal zero, and we will find when does secant theta minus two equal zero. Well, sine theta equals zero, that's easy. The y value is zero here and here, so we'll say that theta can be 0 or pi on account of that factor. On this one, we would say something like this. When does secant theta equal 2? And unless you've memorized the table of secant values, this might not be helpful. So I'll go ahead and change this thing back to 1 over cosine theta equals 2. When does 1 over cosine theta equal 2? Well, again, that doesn't help me much either, but due to the reciprocity of secant in this fraction here, what I can uh, essentially do is reciprocate or flip both sides of the equation, both fractions on both sides of the equation. This technically over here is 2 over 1, so I can flip that over and say that cosine is equal to a half. So secant is equal to 2 at the same positions where cosine is equal to 1 half. And that's because of our reciprocal identities. And so now, uh, considering where does cosine equal a half, well, that's this position and this position, which is a theta value of pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And if I was reporting a final answer here or typing it into Math Excel, I would take the time to write them in numerical order. So the smallest angle is 0, then pi over 3, 
then pi, and then finally 5 pi over 3. And you can check these answers with a graph if you'd like. The last example I'd like to walk through is number 75. Something interesting occurs here. And on 75, we had 3 times 1 minus cosine theta equals sine squared theta. And hopefully at this point, you've seen these enough, and you might recognize that sine squared theta can be written in some form of cosine. Since we already had cosine in the other part of the problem, it, that might be a, a, a worthy step here. Um, so while I'm considering that, I'm also thinking about clearing out the parentheses here. So I'm going to call this uh, 3 minus 3 cosine theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. And again, this comes from our Pythagorean identity, allowing us to rewrite sine squared as 1 minus cosine squared. Now I'm going to move both of these terms to the left side of the equation, make this thing equal to 0. So I've got cosine squared minus 3 cosine um, minus, I'm sorry, plus 2 equals 0. And this looks like it's a factorable expression. Now, mentally, I'm considering this as x squared and this as x. And factors of x squared minus 3x plus 2 come to mind. But of course, with practice, we don't need to consider um, those arguments, and we can just factor it as it is. So I'm going to write cosine theta, cosine theta here, because I know cosine times cosine is cosine squared. And I also know that 2 times 1 is equal to 2. 2 times 1 is equal to 2. And if I had a negative 2 and a negative 1, then uh, during the foiling process, this negative 2 cosine minus 1 cosine combines to make negative 3 cosine. And we have two factors that multiply to equal 0. So I can set each factor equal to 0. Cosine theta minus 1 equals 0. And cosine theta minus 2 equals 0. So the question now becomes, when does cosine theta equal 1? When does cosine theta equal 2? Well, cosine theta equals 1. That's easy to identify. That's this position right here. So that's an angle measure, theta, equal to 0 radians. And then the question becomes, well, when does cosine theta equal 2? And hopefully you recognize that that's not possible. There are no real solutions here. Uh, there's nowhere in this unit circle that contains an x value equal to 2. So because of that, this particular factor yields no real solutions. And so we'll stop there and say that theta must only be, in this case, equal to 0. And we can take a look at a graph and confirm that. Let's, um, let's talk about this. And again, uh, with, with all of these examples, we're talking about angle measures between 0 and uh, 2 pi. So we're talking about solutions that exist within a single rotation on the unit circle. All right, so what we could do uh, when solving these is to simply graph the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation and look for where those two graphs intersect. And I've done that here in Desmos. The purple line represents 3 times 1 minus cosine theta. And the red line represents sine squared theta. And I've restricted the domains between 0 and 2 pi so that the solutions only exist between uh, 0 and 2 pi within one unit circle. So it looks like the graph intersects right here at an x value or theta value of 0, which is indeed true. And it looks like that the graphs intersect over here. Um, and that's a bit misleading because remember, the angle measure solutions that we're looking for exist between 0 and 2 pi, but they don't include 2 pi. 2 pi is 6.283 something, 
Um, so this decimal does imply that there is a solution there, but remember we would not report it because of our domain restriction. It's supposed to be between 0 and 2 pi, but not including 2 pi. So uh, that's a quick way to show that there are no additional solutions beyond theta equaling 0, and that represents a, a nice result for this, uh, this particular equation. Again, I hope these videos have helped you. Um, if you have any specific questions on these optional homework problems or your Math Excel homework problems, please reach out to me and let me know. Uh, we can set up a Zoom meeting to talk, or I can record a walkthrough um, of the problem if, you, if you'd like to see that too. Thanks for watching.